In an election dominated by the question of who can be the change candidate, President Joe Biden has a message. Kamala Harris will be her own person and bring a fresh perspective. Every president has to cut their own path. That's what I did. I was loyal to Barack Obama, but I cut my own path as president. That's what Kamala's going to do. She'll be, she's been loyal so far, but she's going to cut her own path. Those comments come as Kamala Harris has been facing questions about what she stands for. A lot of your press hits get criticized. You know, folks say you come off as uh, very scripted. They say you like to stick to your talking points. And some media says you have— That would be called discipline. You know, some people say that at, if until someone has heard the same thing at least three times, it just doesn't stay with you. So repetition is important. And for that reason, yes, at my rallies, I say the same thing when I go to Detroit as I do in Philly, as I do wherever I am, to make sure that people hear and, and receive— what I think are some of the most um, critical issues that are at stake in this election. Let's bring in Democratic strategist Juanita Tolliver. Elise Jordan, who worked with George W. Bush, is back. Both are MSNBC analysts. When I heard her say that, and I was watching, because we actually streamed that on MSNBC yesterday afternoon, and I totally got sucked into the conversation, though I usually try to go home and work from work and, and separate. And I thought about a conversation I had in 2000, Elise, with your old boss, well, maybe not your old boss, but the guy who was running the campaign of your old boss, Carl Rove is sitting in the stands of a George Bush rally. And I said, if you guys win, what's going to be the difference? And he said, repetition. We know what our message is, and we say it over and over and over again. So when I heard Kamala Harris say that yesterday, I wonder what your reaction was when you heard Kamala Harris well, it's say that. it's the hallmark that. of a disciplined candidate, and that's something that every campaign staffer dreams of, a candidate that stays on message. In her case, what she's getting flack for isn't necessarily, though, the discipline and the message repetition. It's that voters in the middle who are still undecided 19 days before the election, and it all baffles us. Uh, they are wanting more specifics. And what are those specifics that are going to, you know, drive them forward? Uh, do you agree with that, Juanita? And I wonder, now that Biden has made a point to say Kamala Harris, like VPs before her, including me, will chart her own path, does that give her some room? I mean, first on the discipline part, I appreciated that she interjected when she was being asked that question to express that succinctly. It's about the repetition, which honestly should be refreshing for voters when they hear chaotic blubberings and mess on, from her opponent every single day. Now, when it comes to Joe Biden saying that Vice President Harris will cut her own path, I fully agree with that. And, and the reality is, I hope that she takes license to this and is less hesitant when confronted with that question about how different she'll operate from Joe Biden. And the reality is, she has gone further than Joe Biden on a range of issues. We know, for example, on abortion, she has repeatedly said the word abortion, whereas Joe Biden doesn't. And then she has been a staunch advocate for reproductive rights for years. So I, I, I do hope that, yes, she should be very proud of some of the successful policies that have emerged from the Biden-Harris administration, especially on ec the economy, especially on cutting prescription drug prices and gun violence prevention. But she should also frame her every single policy idea and her vision for the future as how she will extend that and drive it further in support of the American public. So at a time, Juanita, when she's trying, and, and I think the polls show this, or certainly the people we talk to talk about this, that they're still trying to figure out who she is. She's trying to define herself. She was asked about the labels she's been given by Trump. And listen to another part of her interview from yesterday. Why do you allow him to call you the border czar when that were, that's not even your, that wasn't no, your No, I'm not role. giving him permission for that. Oh, oh you're right. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you don't push back on it because that wasn't your, that's not, that wasn't your role. What, what? I, I, fact checkers have made that clear. Look, okay. if I responded to every name he called me, I wouldn't be focused on the things that actually help the American people. And that's my focus. So, Anita, how do you decide if you're Kamala Harris, what's worth responding to and what isn't? I mean, let's be real, Chris. This is the same opponent who has said that she does, she is not a black woman, right? Like, you don't give him oxygen, and that is the way that you upset him most. Mm -hmm. And so what I appreciate, again, with that interjection in the middle of the question, she doesn't grant him permission because he is going to say whatever he wants to say. She has the responsibility to voters to convey her vision 
for the future of this country, not respond to every ridiculous thing that Donald Trump says. Honestly, I would love it if the campaign just repeatedly posted that image of her from the debate where she's just looking at him, giving him side eye, confused about what he's saying because it makes absolutely no sense every single time. That is a sufficient response enough, honestly. Well, you know, Donald Trump hasn't exactly offered a lot of specifics on his proposals and some of the specifics that he has are hard to follow. Take a listen to this exchange. This is about tariffs, something that he's kind of gotten into a lot over the last week or so at the Economic Club of Chicago yesterday. To me, the most beautiful word in the dictionary is tariff. And it's my favorite word. Tariffs also have another side. Isn't that something that you have to acknowledge? No. You could be plunging America into the biggest trade war no. since Smoot Hall. But there are no you're gonna, tariffs. You're going to stop. You're gonna, there are tariffs already. No, there the are no tariffs. All you have to do is build your plant in the United States, and you don't have any tariffs. It must be hard for you to you know, spend 25 years talking about tariffs as being Listen. negative and then have somebody <laughs> explain to you that you're totally wrong. You worked in the State Department. I'm wondering what you make of that. Oh, let's just leave the whole policy debate aside, Donald Trump changed the debate on free trade completely within the American political ecosystem. Mm. And he is tr going back to his bag of old tricks. He's reviving it, even though economists have said it would be devastating and it's essentially another tax on more Americans. But that is why Donald Trump, he's just going to do greatest hits, immigration, going back to free trade, uh, repetition when he doesn't even know what he's talking about.